Hi, welcome to a robotics tutorial by Robojax. My name is Ahmed Shamshiri. In this video, I'm going to introduce this uh, Make Block 10 in 1 robotic kit. This is a second video. In the first video, I showed you how to assemble it, all the components, everything was explained. In this video, we are going to learn how to install the software, driver, library, and application mobile app so we can get start using this robotic arm. I'm going to explain how this robot moves and I'm going to explain how to customize the clamp and the arm so it moves the way you want it. Then we are going to learn how to power this robot using lithium rechargeable battery or external power adapter. Let's get started with this. On the larger screen, click on this area of the player so you can see all the chapters. On your mobile device, you will see the menu. When you touch it, you see all the chapters. And then click and touch to move to that section of the video. The first step is to have Arduino IDE installed. So go to arduino.cc and here click on software. On this screen, you will see that it is available for different operating system. I'm zooming in so you can see it. On this page, I don't like this Arduino 2. Uh, I don't like the interface. So I always prefer, I prefer this legacy Arduino here. And I prefer this zip file. I'm clicking, just download Arduino 1.819. Now here, download it, file is here, and that is zip. If you don't see the zip, that's very easy. Uh, open the start menu, and then file explorer option. I just typed file, file explorer option, and go to view. And here it says height extension for the known file type. I have unchecked it. If I check and apply, pay attention to this zip, the zip disappeared, you see? Now uncheck it so you can see the zip. If I right click and extract all, so it will be Arduino 1.8, will be extracted in here. Let's select extract. And here, the file have been extracted in here. So in case if you forgot, just open the file, file explorer, go to download and the zip file that we downloaded. And this is the extracted folder. Inside this, there is another folder. And this is the file that we are running, but we want to have it here on the taskbar. So just grab it and put it in your taskbar and it will be added here. Every time you click, it will run. Let's click and open it. The first time it takes a little while, don't worry. Once you see this screen, installation has been successful and every time you just click and open it. So now to test it, Let's try it without a battery. Usually the board should get power up via USB. So I've connected this to my computer. Now let me show you. On the start menu, I'm right clicking and showing device manager. We will see ports in here. Let's, let's connect it and let me connect it here. As you can see, we saw here the port, USB serial 340. Uh, so the board have been now powered up via USB, but this cannot operate. You turn off the light, the main light, so you can see. So the board uh, is recognized, the USB is now functioning. If you don't see here under the COM port, or if you see a yellow mark here, it needs it means that you need to install the driver. So here it says manually install the driver. 
So this is a driver. Click. You see it comes here. It's around one megabyte. My antivirus is checking it. Then go to the folder. Again, right click, extract all, and it will be extracted inside this folder. And it will be opened. If you lost it, you see this was the file. Make block and here installer driver. And then run this, double click it, and continue the steps. Uh, the driver will be installed. And now to get the drivers for the Arduino, we come to this page and here link number two. I will provide you the resource page that I created. Click and download the zip file. You can right click and select save as. This will be very easy. And save it in your download folder, for example. Now we know the location of the file which is inside download, make block library. Now open Arduino, go to a sketch, include library, add .zip library. Now go to your download and see which one is make block. This has a zip. This is the, yeah, this is a zip, make block library, click open and it will be installed. Now let's install the app. I'm using Android phone. Let's go make block. Make block app. And as you can see, we see make, make block here. Let's, let's just install it. So the app has been installed fully. Let's open it. See what it asks. Let me turn the light off so we can see. Now, please select your device. Starter and Ultimate. Ultimate 2. So we are selecting this. So now we can have play or we can create something. Let's go with the play first. And in the play, we are selecting all these options are available. So arm tank, so this is the one. So disconnected, please connect your device. Now let's turn on our Bluetooth. Bluetooth is on. Select connect now. Make block. It says allow to connect your location. So please turn on location. Go to turn on. Let's turn on our look. I don't like this, these devices that ask for the location. So I have turned the location on and then come back. Come back to the make block. Again, go to play, arm tank, and then connect now. Connecting. So now the device have been connected. Now, now this is on. But that is blinking. If I connect here, connect, pay attention to this light. If this connects, you will see here a solid uh, Bluetooth uh, light. It means the connection happened and everything is ready. I'm holding this and see what it does before I go on the field, actually. So, forward. Perfect. 
clamp works. I'm holding it from the bottom so the motor is not moving hopefully. This seems so clamp is now closing clamp and then unclamp now this portion now this is for arm up so hopefully this goes up it goes down so the wiring seems to be incorrect up down nice so perfectly it responded very well on the mega pi microcontroller we have this is the uh, expansion port here where a lot of other components like sensors and other items that is needed for other projects will be connected and we can remove it like that and if you don't use this all the ports on uh, Arduino Mega are available from here not all but most of them they have all been numbered here and you can use them so these are all ground and the middle are all 5 volts and the right side are all uh, the pin that gives you the signal and then this is a Bluetooth module and then these are the four motors controller which will be used for different purpose in this case they are used for arm clamp and uh, two uh, um, wheels or uh, gears let me explain this mega pi so you can understand it better this is a usb port and these two terminals are high output 0 to 10 ampere output you can get from this but how you get it it will be explained based on the it will be explained based on the project this is the power switch and these two are the power output so you can get also a power from here the output that you connected to this pen you can connect from 6 to 12 volts this pen this external power supply you can connect 6 to 12 volts and these are external power and the red these two are also output power these four are for SPI communication these are the interface all the pens that you see that have been labeled as from A6 to A15 these yellow and a switch this white piece and here so the Bluetooth module will be connected to this and this pen because the pens are arranged such and these are the for the four motors or the pens are shown in here now to use it with uh, Raspberry Pi, this is our Mega Pi, so that's why they call it Mega and Pi. This is Arduino Mega and you have Raspberry Pi and this Mega will be inserted on top of the uh, Raspberry Pi and it will look like this. You see this piece, we have the connector available with the module. Using it with Mega but this was the piece inside the Mega Pi bag, so do not lose it. So once you connect it like that, then the, you can program Arduino Mega from here and it will communicate via this port with, the, with all these motor driver available for uh, Raspberry Pi. So you can do your Python programming, whatever language you want to use with this actual computer. Let me explain this, these two ports here. These are for high power driving. Very important if for some applications you might need it to turn on and off something with high current for example up to 10 ampere you can control something. So we have four terminals two one piece P1 and P2 and for this one we have an independent MOSFET here and for this one also so we have two MOSFET ready and as you can see here we have these two MOSFET one and so you can see one and two the two MOSFETs are there and we have two pins for that MOSFET and two pins for this. So for the first for the Q2 it says DV3 so I have to see where is the DV3 but for the first one it's analog 0 which means you can output from analog 0 a signal 
to turn this on and off. And here the power supply for the module is like this. We have a jack and it comes here and we have external header immediately. This is the red header. And here that is the red that's available. You can get power from it. And after that we have a 1.5 ampere resettable fuse which is this one. This fuse. This is a fuse. Converter. So the job of this converter is to always get a fixed voltage at the output. Uh, for example 5 volts for the all device. So the output will be available at this point after this inductor. A clean output voltage is available at this point. Let's see how this functions, how the clamp works, and how this robot functions. This is a clamp arm, but you, you can do nine other projects for demonstration and for learning. In this video, we are going to show you this uh, robot. So we have wheels here, plastic gear, and on the right side, we have only one motor. As you can see here, there is no motor, nothing. And then on the left side also, we have two gears and only we have a motor here at the front. At the back there is no motor. So when the gear rotates, the whole side will move. And also this one, the back will rotate. So the same thing, it can move. If you want, if you want to move forward, both of these motors, this motor and this motor, must rotate together at the same speed so it can go forward. If you want to go left, then this motor will be stopped. Only this motor will rotate forward like this. So it will go to the left. If you want to go to the right, then this motor will stop and this motor will rotate. And as a result, the robot will go to the right. If you want to go backwards, both motor rotates in the uh, opposite direction. So you got the idea. We have for the arm, we have uh, two motors. One motor here. The job of this motor is to send this arm up and down. So this arm can go up and down. We have the motor here. The job of this motor is to pull this shaft forward and close. So the motor will just rotate because there is a screw. This uh, shaft will uh, push this piece this piece exactly it goes back and forward and as a result the clamp will open and close this one this arm if i say clamp it does the clamping and then if i say unclamp so this motor just rotates and because we put this this is like a nut around the shaft then this one caused to move this up and down and as a result this clamp will clamp and unclamp let's say when i say press clamp this motor does not do anything except this motor is simply rotating and this a piece is acting like a nut on the shaft so this goes back and forth and as a result these two pieces of arm causing this to unclamp or clamp some um, soft uh, plastic here so it doesn't break uh, some hard items when you push even though it's, it's not pushing that hard because the motor will feel the face the force and will just rotate idle but still there is some soft uh, clamp here at the hand to, to rotate each motor these motors so we have the two motors at the bottom as you can see the, these are motor drivers we have four motor drivers have a look at the clamp the clamp has two buttons here it this one says unclamp which means when i press it it opens you see this is now idle when i press it more than needed it will do that so if i say clamp now Now you see, this is very high. Now let's go down. And even it goes 
to the ground even. So we have two buttons that it says arm up and arm down. Push the arm up, arm down. This motor will rotate. Let me turn the camera, the light on. So you see that gear. So those are doing the, the job. Now you can control the speed of the clamp and the speed of this motor. So the arm goes up and down at what speed you can control it, which I'm going to show you. And I want to go forward. You see, I'm pressing. Let me put it somewhere so you can see. I'm pressing and if I go down reverse so this goes in reverse now now if I want to go for example to the right this one when you go to the right this goes directly one is rotating the opposite of the other one and as a result this will just rotate exactly on the middle of this axis around itself so let's go to the left but if you want to just go to the right this joystick I can take it you see I'm going to the right and this is a little uh, moving a little or no uh, movement so with this joystick you can go to the left or right and somewhere in between all of this with the joystick so you can move the robot to any spot you want, any direction, left, right, or at the middle in between, or around itself. Uh, to change, when you install the app, you might see that this is behaving the opposite of what it should do, these two. Now, this one says app. Pay attention, when I press up, it goes up. But, uh, or the down, it goes down. But initially when I installed the app, it needed some uh, correction. Go to design and the screen will change. Now these buttons can be moved. For example, I can hold it and move it somewhere here if I want. I brought it. Now, when I press it, it has three items. The first one it says port and then second one says code. The last one delete. So you can delete it if you don't need it for a certain application for example but if i click port it will give me where the cable for that poor, uh, particular arm is connected the arm is connected to this port you see from the left the second one if i hold it the same way as the picture one two three so this is connected in here and it shows here one two three so the arm is connected you can move it if you want for some reason so you can move the cable to this one and select the right port by clicking like that which i'm not going to do it so just say here it says confirm and then arm up so this is for arm up confirm so i'm canceling it i'm not going to change that but if i hold it the second one is for the code if I press code, here it says 100 and 0. Let's change it to the opposite what it does. This says arm up. Now I want to send it down. To send it down, it says 0. The top is 100. The bottom is 0. Do not change the bottom. We just change the top. The just touch. This screen will come. Put minus. We are just changing the polarity, the amount. So minus and then 100. And then OK. Now this is done. I'm going back and then go down for the down select and then code. Now this is minus 100. I don't know if you can see it in the uh, on camera. Minus, I'm just making it 100, which means positive. Now go back. Now if I show you, so this one, if I press it up, oh, I have to go back to play and press it you see up now goes down and down goes up 
So this way you can change the direction, positive to negative, negative. So you see, now let's go back and change it. Go to design, arm, code. Now this is minus 100, I'm making it 100, which I just shown you. And then in this one, go that for the down, code, and here. And then make it minus 100, and then go back play and now up means up and then down means down now from this screen after making changes if you press this you will see this screen uh, let's name it like arm and then call it three so that's i just called it done okay and now that disappeared so you can work with your own project go back here if this is now play if i go here to the right this is create and here arm three the last one is here this is number two which i did previously so if i touch this your code will be loaded and you can work with it or change it
Once you upload your code, you need to have power here via battery and then connect this to this port so you can power this up and you can put four, uh, six batteries here but in some application if you want to test before actually testing it you can connect external power here if you have a power adapter with this type of connection make sure that outside is negative and inside pen is positive that is normal for majority of adapters but sometimes i've seen it that the positive is outside and it will kill your robot so make sure that that is properly uh, wired you can connect your adapter up to 12 volts directly to this robot to this point here i got 12 volts power from my power supply so i'm connecting positive and negative as you can see it says 11.75 so that's okay this is a kiwitz multimeter i have done a full review the link is below the video if you want to purchase it i connect the wires in reverse positive and negative reverse you will see the minus here so i'm connecting positive to that terminal and the negative to this terminal and the robot will not turn on this is on and this is off you see the light turn off Now it can run the motors if we need it. Now let me explain how you can power up your robot with 18650 or lithium rechargeable battery. This, because these batteries will be total waste, once you are done you will throw it. That's not good also for environment and also it will be very costly to replace them. So you can power it with two uh, lithium ion batteries. And there are also different versions of these batteries, but you can power it with 18650. 18650 is referring to the size, to the diameter and length of this. Uh, so you can get a battery holder, something like this, or maybe pieces that you can put the batteries together with two or three batteries. You can power this up. One of the battery is uh, with a nominal of with a nominal voltage of 3.7 and a maximum charge voltage of 4.2 volts. So when it gets filled up, the maximum is 4.2, but this is usually referred to as 3.7 volts. Uh, so that's called nominal voltage. Two of this in series will be uh, uh, 7.2 volts, and it's perfect. But you can go also up to 12 volts if you connect three of them. Uh, so 3 times 3 is 9 plus the uh, 7 times 3 is 2.1 so 11.1 volt you can get also from this with a nominal voltage and connect it. So the positive is connected like that to the negative and this is connected it's coming like that and from here it's connected to this so we call this in series and then we have one positive uh, there and one negative and this is a connector. Okay. If I show you the voltage here, th this is not charged. So and right now it shows 11 volt. And for the for this, make sure that outside the external connector is negative. If I hold it with my uh, with this piece and show you, and if I connect this to the middle, you see it shows 11 volt because this is not fully charged. Otherwise, it will be something like 12 point six and here if i connect a voltmeter to this battery it shows it, this is fully charged to 4.15 but this is not a nominal voltage so assume it as 3.7 and operate it because the voltage will be reduced once it's uh, drained three this is 3300 milliamp per hour very high capacity battery and it will, it will last longer plus it's rechargeable so you can charge it and recharge and play and don't waste the batteries you can buy the battery holder like this so you can put two of them in series this is already prepared you just connect it and the two connectors are here you can uh, connect it you can connect it directly to these so th this red terminal, this has been labeled with V. V is positive is on this side and ground is on the other side. Or you can connect it to this connector. To charge them, you can get uh, as from one of these uh, Lutikala battery chargers where you can 
put your battery directly here and it will charge it for you it shows you the time the amount of charge everything I have separate video on my other channel about energy which I have the review the link for the video is below this video and also you can purchase this charger from that video as well from the link under that video thank you for watching i hope you have enjoyed and learned from my tutorial to get updates of my upcoming videos make sure to subscribe to my channel and thumb up the video see you next time